St. Michael versus 666, why the presence of the great archangel should be huge in your life. Let me start with a term that you're very familiar with, good people. Armageddon. It's an apocalyptic term. You've heard it many times. It certainly is in the Bible. It's referenced uh, by evangelists and prophecy experts. And they usually refer to the final war, like World War III. Well, that's kind of partially right. But that's not really the most meaningful or relevant relevance to Armageddon. As we've said a number of times here, but it's worth stressing because Our Lady has stressed this in the message. The most important meaning, the most relevant meaning for Armageddon is what's happening right now. The spiritual, the spiritual Armageddon. It's a war out there, good people. It's a battleground. And Our Lady and Our Lord said it is raging between good and evil. And guess who's in between? You and I. And they, both sides, are trying to claim our souls. One for Lucifer forever in the abode of the damned, and the other side, led by St. Michael the Archangel. Our Lady and our Lord have said that he is the leader of the army. And he is trying to get us so that we can be with the Father in heaven in the abode of the blessed. And so it is raging right now. And I thought it was interesting, and that's why we have to review the messages. A few times Our Lady said that we have been born, we have been brought to life, that because we have been called to be warriors of God. You think of warriors, you think, oh, well, that's St. Michael. That's St. Raphael. That's St. Gabriel. That's uh, maybe Padre Pio, you might call a warrior. No. In the message, Our Lady and Our Lord are saying that you and me are called to be warriors of God. And no more than this present time is does that come to life because of the huge battleground that we are in the midst right now where you have now 666 literally not figuratively but all hell loosed upon earth and I thought it was interesting, too, how Our Lady refers to this as a battleground, of course, but this is a contest. This is a contest between good and evil, as we said, between Lucifer and Our Lady and St. Michael. It's a heated contest. This is a, these are arch rivals. It's like well, would you say it's like the New York Yankees against the Boston Red Sox? That baseball rivalry? Well, kind of a very pale comparison, but you get the point. It is a fierce battle. St. Michael versus 666. Now, what is exactly 666? Well, all of you Bayside scholars and experts really should know this by now. But I, I've reviewed this many times myself, and it seems you always pick something up every time. 666. The first six means Lucifer and five major demons that will be or have been released from hell. The second six uh, for the six days of suffering, which is... Let's get some input from the crowd. What's the six days of suffering? World War, III. World War III, which is three days. And what's the next three days? The chastisement or specifically, Karina, the ball of redemption or a fiery comet, which between both of them will take over, will take billions. That's with a B, billions of lives. The last six, Lucifer 
in the five major demons will be crushed by the Virgin Mary, will be crushed by Our Lady the Roses, Mary, help of mothers. And guess who has the job of throwing in the pit and then chaining them? St. Michael. How would you like that job? Alita, you want that job? Would you like the job of throwing Lucifer, Beelzebub, the five major demons, you have to throw them in the pit, then you have to chain them. Who wants that job? Any, son, any hands? Uh, Jim, you want to do it? Rob? Rob, you want to do that? <laughs> That's a job. That's a job only for St. Michael. No one else could do that. No one else could do that, could do that job. So, um, as I mentioned, though, St. Michael is the leader of the army. Let's read a couple of excerpts that will confirm that. Our Lady says on December 31st, 1970, Michael will stand beside all who call, for he is the leader, the warrior chosen by God for his army. End of quote. Our Lady, September 28th, 1976, there are many armies of light now rising with Michael to guide them throughout your world. And Jesus, October 1st, 1977, you will, pre you will proceed onward, my children, under the banner of faithful and true, guided by the great warrior of heaven, St. Michael the Archangel. So, that's why he's the leader of the army. Because he's majestic. He's powerful. He's a warrior. And he earned that title. Because, as Father Scott mentioned last night, he led the charge against Lucifer. That superior angel who said, non serviam, I will not serve. I'm God. I am the brilliant light. I am the creator. I'm number one, non serviam. Battle cry of St. Michael when he threw him out of heaven with the good angels was? Who was likened to God? And how do you, and what, what is the Latin expression? Quiesut Deus, who is like unto God? That booming voice. And we know all about that booming voice, don't we? How many times did Veronica say in the message, or when she heard his voice, that it was a booming, deep voice? It was <laughs> powerful. You knew it was St. Michael. You knew it was St. Michael. And uh, so that's, uh, that's why we, he has been appointed in these days as the leader of the army. He's helping our, our blessed mother's going to crush Satan and the five major demons. Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and thy seed and her seed, and she will crush thy head. Genesis 3.15, Our Lady. But St. Michael's the leader of the army. And for good reason. And we need a presence like that. I mentioned majesties. I thought it was interesting how Our Lady and Our Lord refer to both sides. She refers to the majesties. So you have the satanic majesty. Wasn't that a rock song? Okay, right. <laughs> okay, all right. I thought with the Rolling Stones or something, I thought there was a, a rock song, Satanic Majesty. You have the Satanic Majesties, and then you have the Majesties of Heaven. Obviously, Our Lady, St. Michael, and uh, Jesus, of course, and all the saints. Uh, but this is the big battle between the two Majesties. St. Michael is very majestic, he's powerful. As I said last night, and I think I, I've said it a couple of times. For, um, just repeating the message that Veronica has said that he's massive. He is, takes up half the sky. And to put it into human terms, she describes him as being like 42 feet tall. 
No, have you ever seen, have you ever been next to a basketball player or someone that's seven foot tall? Yeah. It's pretty freaky, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you're looking up and yeah. you always say, how's the weather up there or something like that, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, just on the side, um, I was going home one Christmas and uh, the New Jersey Nets, uh, at the time they were New Jersey Nets, and I think they're Brooklyn Nets, uh, they were uh, coming off the plane the same time as I was. And uh, you see these tall basketball players, you know? And remember those phone booths that are about yay? They're about this high, right? And you were, um, well, I see one of the basketball players, he's got his elbow on top talking to someone. <laughs> and it's way up here, you know? But anyways, when you think of someone's, someone like that, to put it in perspective, how would you like it if you saw someone who was like 40 feet tall, massive, bulked up, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's a force. That That's the demons, as we read in the message, are terrified, terrified with the presence of St. Michael. They flee, they run. We gave you that example, we'll say it again, with uh, St. Michael, who has a spear, and he has a little demon at the end, and Veronica says it looks like he has a hot dog on a spear. But he actually had speared a little demon who was harassing one of the good pilgrims. Boom. And he's in the little demon being the coward that he is. Let, let go of me and blah, 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 blah. Crying and that type of thing. But he, he just had, it looked like a hot dog and a spear in the presence of St. Michael. We need all that good people because it's nice for us to talk about like talk about this but when you have lucifer and five major demons and their cohorts released upon hell that's a force to be reckoned with and remember our lady has said they've done their job well we have to be in uh, yeah we're talking that's right the forces of 666 our lady said satan has done his job well we have to be on guard we need the presence of saint michael now, um, I mentioned that we want to go through some dates here because you say 666, wow. I mean, that's, of course, in the apocalypse. You think of, ooh, the Antichrist. Oh, no. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that, Michael? When, when were these demons? Where, when, how? Well, Our Lady actually tells us the first demon was released in 1940. Lucifer, Our Lady said, his first year was Earth year 1940. Let's write that down. Can you see from here? A demon number one, 1940. Okay, that's Lucifer. That's our understanding based on the message. And putting all the pieces together, it's quite apparent that that's Lucifer. Now, just a brief aside on that, or actually connection, I should say. Our Lady said 1970, when the liberal abortion law was introduced into a New York state, that demon one or Lucifer assisted in that uh, legislation in enacting one of the most, not one of the most, the most liberal abortion law in the country at that time. This is July 1st, 1970. The New York Times referred to New York State and New York City as the abortion capital of the world. He was very influential. Uh, Veronica said that he took over a man that had fallen from grace. Particularly, that was a very influential. And then Demon 2. There was no specific date given. Again, we can conclude from the message. There was no specific date given by Our Lady and Our Lord. But we do know that he was a released at least by 1970, at least, if not earlier. 1970, Demon 2. 
And one of the reasons we know that is because Veronica said in the Sunday Holy Hour of April 22nd, 1973, that demon too was also actually even more influential in passing this liberal abortion law in Albany, that he was directly responsible. Demon number two. And you say to yourself, and when you, you examine it, Lucifer, another major demon, why would they be involved in abortion? Because it's a sacrifice to them. When you, when you butcher, when you kill a baby like that, blood is being shed. It's horrific. We all know it's murder. It's a grievous act against the Father in heaven, who we know has appointed this soul, or has assigned this soul, a job, a place, a mission, and his life is just snuffed out. And so we often, it is often said that these abortions are really a sacrifice to Satan. And so that's why, and it's, we all know how it's just a terrible act. Very a terrible act. But with, <coughs> excuse me, so the, he had his hand on this. Why did Our Lady come to New York City? Because of the abortion. Counterpoint, counter move. Satan does this, Our Lady and Our Lord do this. Okay, well, we're going to appear in New York City as a counter move. But with that being said, I mean, I was very descriptive and very graphic about abortion. We can't forget, especially in this year of mercy, and I know there has been individuals uh, that uh, certainly I have spoken through the years that have committed abortion. I would say that God is merciful. I want to get that in. I want to get that in. Uh, and as terrible as, as it is, God's mercy is boundless. It is infinite. As long as you're repentant and you're sorry, you will be forgiven. Even if your sins are scarlet, your sins will be forgiven. But let's move on. That's, uh, that's very important. Demon 3, released July 15th, 1972. Demon 3. Uh, July 15th, uh, excuse me, that's 72, my mistake. Our Lady said uh, on July 15th, 1973, 72, excuse me, Demon 3 was released. Again, I want to stress, when these demons are released, they are captains, if you will. Um, they have structure and order in hell as well, so they're bringing their legions with them. And we have to remember that it's never been this bad. It has never been this, demo uh, this uh, evil. Right, correct. Right. Um, Demon 4 was released uh, before Christmas 1972. I'll just say right now, Christmas 72. A Demon 5 was released on uh, July 15th, 73. What is this with this July 15th? Yeah. Well, boy, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, July 15th, 73. Uh, that was a Demon 5, which is uh, re responsible for communism. Demon 5, infiltration, communism. Our Lady has told us. Uh, Our Lady has told us through Veronica, and it's particularly with the miraculous photos. Uh, Demon Five, in 1973, and Demon Six was released before April 17th, 1976.
Our Lady and our Lord have made it very, very clear with Demon 6, very, very powerful. Again, Bayside Scholars, what's Demon 6 going to do? Start World Demon 6 is going to start World War 3. And we know that that's going to result into a nuclear holocaust and uh, tens of millions of people will be lost. But he's very, very powerful. And then at that time, Our Lady said, when Demon 6 is released, this is what Our Lady had said in the message, that um, Jesus and St. Michael will come forward. That when he's released, Jesus and St. Michael will come forward. And of course, uh, at this time, um, Jesus will return and uh, order will be restored, but not before the six days of suffering. So there you have it right there. It's right, this is all in the message. I assume you good people have read this before. And number one, right there, there's Demon 1, 40, uh, 1940, Demon 2, 1973, 715, 72, Demon 4, before or around Christmas, 72, Demon 5, 715, 73, Demon 6, before 417, 76. So you can see why Our Lady and Our Lord had to appear. This is, this is right here. This is why. The, Our Lady, the first appearance of Our Lady was June 18th, 1970. That's where Our Lady had to appear and establish a refuge in New York City and for the entire world because you could see right here all of the demons that are released upon earth and their legions. That's why you see this just bizarro insanity stuff happening in the world. Stuff you just can't make up. And it's just so, uh, it's, it's very demonic, to say the least. And uh, so that's why we need the presence of St. Michael. St. Teresa said back in 1968, quote, never has Satan been so unleashed upon souls. And that was in 1968. And there's your proof right there. And these are the major demons, Lucifer and five major demons. And so, good people, we are in the fight of our life and for our eternal life and that's why we need St. Michael that's why Our Lady said on September 13th 1974 Michael must be entered into the prayers and hearts of mankind and if we don't we can give an example from here to Main Street if we don't have devotion to St. Michael, or if we abandon him, we throw him out, we ignore him, what happens? Disaster. Satan moves in, he takes over. Let's, the, the obvious example would be the removal of the St. Michael prayer in 1965. Post-Vatican II, inexplicably, they removed the St. Michael prayer. So as a result, Satan had free reign. That was a master stroke by Lucifer. That's why Our Lady said it. he's done his job well. It's a game of chess. Is, is, uh, Michael, Matthew, like, uh, the message says about that Lucifer began his reign at 24, like 20 or 4 years from 1940. It was just before they were above the St. Michael prayer from the yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So you have, uh, this is... Uh, <coughs> That would be the most glaring example of disaster when you abandon St. Michael. Removal of St. Michael from the liturgy, from the Mass. Disastrous. A master stroke by Lucifer there. He basically has free reign now. Can you imagine how many St. Michael prayers are being said every day? When it was? Wow, the power. That, that's an exorcism. That is a short exorcism that prayer. So, so if you have, if you have uh, what do we have, a billion Catholics worldwide now? What's the number now? 
1.4 billion Catholics saying the St. Michael prayer every day, and then on, on Sunday, well, especially on Sunday, the day of the Lord. Yes, but it is considered a short exorcism. It's powerful. It's not being said anymore, except for in the traditional masses. And we all know about the third secret of Fatima. That's why a lady warned back in 1970, 1917, the third secret of Fatima, that Satan would enter into the highest realms of the hierarchy in, in Rome. That's what's happened. There's no St. Michael to stop him. There's no restraining force to use scriptural verbiage. The restraining force has been removed. And now the church, as Our Lady said, is in shambles. Mm. Wow, that's why we need St. Michael. And I think you would have some personal I think you would have some personal examples as well. If you have abandoned St. Michael, if you don't have St. Michael in your life, you probably can give your own personal examples like, ooh. That's why Our Lady and Our Lord have said in the message, they begged, they pleaded, return St. Michael. Return him in image and in sound. And that's why I've said to you many times, we have the service area right there. Most of you probably have an image, but get it for your, for your family, your friends, your loved ones, your parishioners. Christmas is coming. Something. It, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be this, uh, you know, honey, I got you this for Christmas, you know. <laughs> just, I mean, just get a medal. A medal, a little picture, something. I mean, I hope I'm making my point. The devils are terrified with St. Michael. Even a little image. Yeah. Um, so, very extremely important. I think, as I mentioned last night, you think of four essential resources or channels of grace or ingredients you need in this fight for your life. Holy Mass, Holy Rosary, Brown Scapula, and... You said St. Monica? St. Monica. Oh, sh <laughs> oh, I thought you said... <laughs> After all this and you said St. Monica? <laughs> Say, Michael. <laughs> okay. Am I communicating? <laughs> Am I, anyone listening to me? Okay. <laughs> okay. Say, Michael. Say, Michael. There you go. Now, obviously, you can add, add many other things. Particularly, comes to mind corporate, the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, good people. Very, very important. But I'm making a point here. Holy Mass, Holy Rosary, Bronze Scapula, and devotion to St. Michael. You're doing that, you're on the right path. You get devotion to St. Michael, you're going to be okay. Believe you me, you'll be okay if you have devotion to St. Michael. Now, um, as James has made very clear, a tattoo of St. Michael does not count. <laughs> no, you're laughing. Is Alice here? Oh, she's out there. This is true. This is true. I may have told you this before, but this is a true story. Right at the Holy Grounds at the service area, uh, two, police, uh, two policemen stopped by. Uh, this was, uh, I'd say, two, three years ago. And, they, of course, they see St. Michael. They love St. Michael. I have to say, um, props, kudos to NYPD. They're usually very, very good and cooperative with us. Anyways, they stop by because they see the big image, the logo. They, they saw this logo of St. Michael. They stop by. They're at the service area. They're talking to uh, Alice. Alice calls me over. Says, "Michael, would you talk with these policemen?" He says, uh, she, um, 
Alice says, I was just trying to tell them the importance of St. Michael, patron of police. And, and I said, yes, uh, I just reiterated what Alice was saying. I said, it's very, very important, officers, that you have an image of St. Michael, patron of the police. You know, God knows, when you go out the door in the morning, you know, it's a very dangerous situation, particularly in New York. And um, the officer says, yeah, okay. Um, I says, well, let me, uh, here, let me get you a medal of St. Michael. He says, no, I have an image of St. Michael. I says, wonderful. <laughs> I thought he was going to show me. <laughs> rolls up the sleeve. <laughs> rolls up the sleeve, and he has the most gorgeous image, the traditional image of St. Michael. You ever see that beautiful traditional image of St. Michael in color? Yeah, <laughs> beautiful image. <laughs> Unbelievable. And then Bill and I were in Albany, the same thing. It was another a policeman that had the image of St. Michael tattooed on his... Uh... Now, I don't know. I suppose that might count because of their intention, their intention and so forth. But you know what? Let's stick with the metal and sacramental. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's stick with a sacramental, a medal, a St. Michael chaplet, and so forth. You need to have that. Uh, that is crucial. And uh, but the, the main thing is good people. We said this is a battle. We said this is a contest. This is a competition between good and evil. St. Michael and Our Lady. St. Michael wins. St. Michael wins. We already know that. But there are casualties in battle. There are casualties in war. You and I have to pray that we're not a casualty. And how do we do that? Particularly as we remember St. Michael this weekend, devotion to this great saint, this great archangel. You will not be a casualty in this war. And there'll be many. A lady saying that souls are falling into hell like snowflakes. There are many casualties. But you and I are not going to be a casualty. Those who have devotion to St. Michael the Archangel, you will not be a casualty. We can guarantee you that. If you have that sincere devotion to this great Archangel, he will protect you. No question about it. God bless you. A good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ, on this uh, beautiful feast day in honor of our glorious patron and guardian, St. Michael the Archangel. And, uh, and anyone who is a Bayside scholar and, uh, and have really studied the messages, you know how much acclaim and praise has been given to this great archangel. He has been identified by Jesus and Our Lady as the leader of the army. That is this battle against 666, against the Antichrist forces. And Jesus has called him the greatest warrior in heaven. And so it really behooves us to have a great devotion and a deep love for this Archangel Michael. And uh, very briefly, uh, St. Teresa said many, many years ago through Veronica that never has Satan been so unleashed upon souls than today. And so when you th consider those powerful words from St. Teresa, we realize that we need as much protection and grace as possible. And there's four major sacramentals or sources of grace that come to my mind that it's important that it's in your life. The Holy Mass, the Holy Rosary, the Brown Scapula, and devotion to St. Michael the Archangel. In fact, Our Lady said on September 13th, 1974, Michael must be entered into the prayers and hearts of mankind. And so we have been saying this over and over again, and we're just repeating the message from Jesus and Mary. It is crucial, it is imperative, good people, that you have an image, a likeness, a statue of St. Michael in your homes, in your car, 
and you need his protection. You need to have that instrument of power and majesty before you at all times, especially with this unleashing of Satan upon the world and the church. And so, and not only yourself, good people, but your loved ones, your family, your friends, your parishioners, make sure they have some type of image, a medal, a statue, a photo, very, very powerful. Satan is terrified with the image when he sees St. Michael the Archangel. As I mentioned to you last year, Veronica had many visions of St. Michael. She often said that he took up half the sky, and she often would describe Jesus as being six feet tall. But that St. Michael was like seven times Jesus' height. So I guess St. Michael is 42 feet tall. <laughs> now, we know heaven is speaking figuratively, but they've made their point. This is a sign of wonder and majesty for you and I, for friends of God. For the evil, it is terrifying. And so that's why you need that image. And so we urge you to please, especially with Christmas coming, a beautiful opportunity to get a little medal, a statue, anything for your family and loved ones. They're all available to my left at the service area. We have a St. Michael gift table and all of those images that you need are right there. Take some extra home for gifts, especially as I said, with Christmas coming. This is all a devotion. This is all a donation to the good work of St. Michael's World Apostle, as you know, good people. All of the proceeds go to our charitable work and in support of these public reparative prayer vigils and also the Sunday Holy Hour for Priests that we have every Sunday outdoors as well. Um, any other questions like with the 666, with the release dates, or St. Michael? Uh, yes, uh, Monica. Oh, the, our lady said on these dates, good, um, Monica was asking, uh, how, did we get up, how did we get the date Christmas 1972? Because when you read the message and you put it all together, it, there may not be a specific date, but it clearly you can deduce, uh, determine that it was... Um, Christmas 72 or before it could have been a week before a month before um, you have okay it was between here and here obviously demon 3 was July 15 72 and demon 4 was Christmas 1972 so around I, I said before actually I should have put before Christmas so this is where you had this is where all that's why the last uh, 40 50 years have been brutal this is where he's really showing his power. And you and I in the world are empowering Lucifer and his demons when we commit sin, when we reject the Father in heaven, when we don't follow the will of God, as St. Michael did. That's what St. Michael did. St. Michael was subjected to the test, as all the angels were. St. Michael said, I'm, I'm with the Father. I know my place. I'm, I'm a created being. I'm an angel. I am of superior intelligence and strength and so forth, but I'm not God. And unfortunately, uh, Luciel, as Our Lady refers to him, Lucifer, Luciel, he was uh, after uh, the, probably the most brilliant uh, creation of the Father, Ex just of superior intelligence strength, beauty, but it went to his head, obviously. He thought, oh, look at how beautiful, look at how smart I am, look at how strong I am. I must be God. Well, he was created. He was created. Yes, Juliet.
Mm-hmm. Right, right. 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 Right, right, yes. Um, I think, oh, did, okay, I'll, I guess I have to repeat that. Uh, I thought, Jim, you were going to be the mic guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no. Uh, let me just repeat that question. A good question. Uh, Julia was basically asking, um, uh, do we know what the test was that these angels were subjected to and what they failed and why some passed and why some failed? And uh, I think, and she mentioned a specific example, which I'll just recap right now. I think my understanding is that's from Mary. I read that in Mary of Agrita. I wonder if Mother Angelica was quoting Mary of Agrita. It could be in Catherine, Catherine Emmerich as well. Um, but basically what uh, Juliet was saying in Mary of Agrita is that uh, the, the big test for these angels was that the Father in Heaven was going to create the Blessed Virgin Mary and that she was going to be of higher status, stature than Lucifer and the angels. And Lucifer and the bad angels couldn't bear that, that not only a, a mere human being would be higher than them, and I don't want to sound sexist, but that it was even a woman would be higher than, than the angels, than Lucifer. That was too much to bear, and so I, that's what I understand, yeah. Cine yes, Bill. Yeah, yeah, sin of pride, right. I wanted to bring up... Oh, jeez. Oh, come up here. Yeah. I wanted to bring up uh, something I found. Uh, a couple years ago, I wanted to bring up something I found. Our Lady said in the message, the UN is what? The seat of what? Of evil, right? It's the, if it's the seat of evil, what does that mean? It's where the evil sits, right? Well, most people think that the UN started in 1945, right? I found a buried document on the internet, it's right here, that the UN actually began, you can see it right here, in 1940. It was called the United Nations Information Organization and it began in New York in September 1940. So there's something with the UN and Lucifer, see this? Oh, definitely, yeah. The beginning, look right here, this mm -hmm. document I found you can read it right there. New York in September 1940 was started in New York UNIO, United Nations Information Organization. So there's some, there's some clue right there that his beginning is 1940. It's the seat of evil, Our Lady said, the UN. So there is a tie-in. He began in 1940. The UN began in 1940. See, this is the document. AG 037-1940, the United Nations. Where was that? I found was that in downtown? I mean, was that, uh, where did it start? New York, was it New York. in New York City, Manhattan? No, well, we know that the first, it was a League of Nations, and then it went to the Flushing Meadow Park. Right, right. But the actual UN, where it first came up with the name, was in New York City in, on, uh, in September 1940. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. Was it, no, I mean, where was the building? Or was it in Queens? No, no, but... This is where the people got together to create it. They're not saying, I don't know if they ever said exactly the building, but it was created in New York City in 1940. That's where it very first came to being. So I thought that was an interesting point that, that uh, it, Lucifer's uh, Earth Year beginning was 1940, and he's so tied in with the UN, and the UN's very beginning is 1940. Right. Interesting, and of course, remember what we were telling you, that the, the United Nations, uh, it, the building, the original building was the Queen's Museum of Art. You're passing that every time. Another counterpoint from Our Lady and Our Lord, you know? Okay, that's where you're going to have the UN, the seat of evil, then will appear in Flushing Meadow Park. There's always a reason for everything. Yes, uh, Mary Ellen. major demons are released in the 70s yeah. and this is right after Vatican II and I was wondering if I remember a very holy priest saying that when the devil wishes to attack God he attacks the church so you've had the UN we're talking about that so all that powerful evil is present and then 
I'm wondering if there's a correlation that Our Lady made about that. I, I mean, she did say Satan sat in on Vatican II, but she, she gives specifics because we know there's so much heresy in the new mass. So boom, 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 all these demons in the 70s right after it. Right. It's amazing. Right. right. Yeah, I remember Our Lady said, uh, you know, Satan sat in on Vatican II and moved the bishops and cardinals like a game of chess. And uh, you did have some good bishops that tried to fight it, like Archbishop Lefebvre and others. Uh, but that is, that is interesting. I mean, you had Lucifer uh, released loose, on the loose, uh, since 1940. Well, this too, we don't know. He could have been, we don't know the exact release of this. He could have been released in 1950, 1960, at least from the message as far as I was able to ascertain, there was no, nothing specific except what we can say. He was released at least by 1970 because of the, because of the dastardly deed, deeds that he, him and Lucifer performed in Albany. That was terrible. Oh, I, that's, ooh. That, there's no words to describe another master stroke because Our Lady said from New York, the evil spreads like cancer. Well, guess what happened? You know, after New York, it was just a, a snowball or a ripple effect to the other states. And, and, so, and quickly, because when was the infamous uh, Supreme Court decision? Uh, January 23rd, 1973? January 23rd, 1973. So just three years later, and of course, who was the governor? Who, yeah, which one? Nelson, Nelson Rockefeller. Gover Governor Nelson Rockefeller passed this. And back then in 1970, if you think about it, um, I did a lot of research on this. Um, there was a lot, as you can imagine, there was a battle going on. This is the first introduction of abortion on demand, basically. And so there were a lot of good people. Remember, the faith was a little bit livelier. It wasn't as dimmed as it is now. And uh, so it was a battle. A huge battle, but uh, Rockefeller um, did not relent. In fact, it passed July first, nineteen seventy. They attempted the the good uh, politicians. Did I say good politician? Oh God. <laughs> Is that an oxymoron? <laughs> um, they tried to overturn it in nineteen seventy two, but Rockefeller vetoed it. Uh, so it didn't happen. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, now we're doing, what, 4,000 abortions a day since 1973. Do the math. That's millions in the U.S. Our Lady and Our Lord said 50 to 60 million a year worldwide. That was in the 80s. 50 to 60 million. That was in the 80s. Anyway, so that's, uh, that was that. Yeah. Um, any other questions uh, on this uh, St. Michael? 666, the six demons release, the timeline. That's the, uh, you can see, it's quite interesting. Uh, what, what else do we know? It, uh, interesting. June 29th, 1972. Oh, uh, Absolutely, yeah. In the picture, ACS minor, right, right. Good, uh, Karina. Uh, June 29th, uh, 1972, the ninth anniversary of the coronation of Pope Paul VI. He said, the smoke of Satan has entered into the church. Interesting for the Pope to say that. That's a pretty brave and courageous statement. A bold statement to admit to that. He said that on June 29th, 1972. And then, as Karina just mentioned, AC into Midas, just sent to 1972. Yes, Elda. Oh, the miraculous pictures? Uh, some do, yeah, the fiery red, yes, yes. But in terms of the demons themselves, well, again, you read the message. Um, Veronica has had many a vision of demons. They're just despicable, they're uh, insidious, they're, they're terrible to behold. And she said they're half human, half animal and blah, blah, blah. she usually just goes yucky yeah they're the ugly right right yeah right very very ugly and uh, um so but 
that's the vision. Here we go. We're in the fight of our life. Good people. The people who are possessed, they're not ugly. They could be policemen, firemen, the nicest guy, the nicest gal. That's the danger here, good people. Lucifer, uh, he hides under cover. He doesn't want to expose himself. He's going to look normal. He's going to be deceptive. He's going to be deceitful. You, think, you might think he's a nice guy, a good girl, holy. And we find something else out. So uh, that's why, what are we to do? What's the answer to that? Again, right in the message. Exorcism. The exorcism. Our lady said, when you come across someone new or someone knocking on your door, what do you do? Say the St. Michael exorcism for discernment. So that's what we do. Because the early, a lot of times they'll disguise themselves as angels of light. You know? yeah. yeah. Angels of light with a heart of a ravenous wolf. Yeah. And they play dirty pool. Our lady even said that. First of all, our lady said Satan never sleeps. And they don't play fair. They try to get you your most vul if they don't there's no such thing if you watch football or a baseball game or whatever you watch, you're supposed to have a level playing field, right? Equal. It's supposed to be fair. <laughs> um, but not with Lucifer. He doesn't do that. No, no. He plays dirty pool. He wakes he he waits till you're down, discouraged, uh, at your weakest point. Whatever the case, when you're most vulnerable, that's when he attacks. That's why Our Lady says, why our lady says a constant vigilance of prayer is so important to, right. to offset the effects of, of the devil and demons. Right. Yeah. Satan has to flee at the sound of prayer. So, that's, so these are all points that we need to remember and that we need to share with our loved ones. Very, very important. So.